objectives. Do you see it on the screen? Yes, sir. Yes. Now, yes. Now, if you see, there are certain. I we talked about these uh, adjectives, pre-modification, and the gradability. If you remember that day, we talked about it. Now, if you see this one, right? Uh, uh, pretty upset or extremely good, or for example, the the, the seriously ill or uh, you unusually silent. So we we studied it. We studied this uh, very tall or this tall right this gradability now if you see there are certain there are uh, uh, some uh, adjectives that they are not gradable right like we cannot grade them like for example you can you say this like how would you say this that uh, uh, how would you grade these adjectives if, which you see on the screen? Like, for example, dead. Okay. Can you grade it or uh, male or female or uh, married or uh, single? Can you like, for example, have you ever heard this one that if somebody says, uh, for example, uh, he is very uh, married. Can you say it? Just answer me. Okay. Very married. See? So there are certain, ad like we talked about these adverbs, right? That uh, we can put it with adjectives and it, uh, like it tells us how, right? So then there are these adjectives that they cannot be gradable. Like, for example, you cannot say uh, very married or you cannot say dead, for example. Now, you cannot say very dead, okay? Or do you understand? Or can you say he is uh, a very, very uh, male or very female? Can you say it? Answer me, please, quickly. No, sir. Or uh, so. So there are so there are some uh, adjectives that they cannot be gradable. Remember, but if I say this one, like for example, if I say uh, he is being very, like for example, he's he's being very uh, Irish, or for example, Scottish. Now, can I do this one? Quickly, please tell me. Hmm? Hello? Yes, sir. It is a stative verb. Sir. Which one is stative verb? Sir, it's being a stative and... Yes, that is a... We are talking Very... about this one, remember, right? Like this one that we just talked about it, that there are certain adjectives that you cannot grade it, remember? Like, for example, we talked about this married. Can you say he is very married? Can you say he is very male? Can you say he is very dead? Or can you say he is, like, very alive? Or can you say he is very Pakistani? Now, these adjectives cannot be like graded, but still, like again, I told you that uh, this English or grammar uh, doesn't have a con like they do not have the, this, these languages. They do not have these concrete rules. It changes and it gives you another meaning. So like, for example, very Irish is not a literal uh, meaning. It's not lit. It doesn't give you a literary uh, kind of a meaning. It gives you like a, a, a different meaning, a connotative kind of meaning. That, like for example, when I say he is very Irish, like in this sentence tells us that, I mean, he is Irish, but the way he is behaving right now, I mean, it it looks. I mean, he is behaving very Irish. Do you understand it? Huh? 
Yes, sir. So uh, remember, you know all these rules, but what we are doing is that we are kind of analyzing this, uh, this grammar, right, language, that how it uh, is used and what are the exceptional cases that the rules tell us that there are certain adverb adjectives that it cannot be gradable, but then we find it that how people grade it and what does it mean? Does it change the meaning? So of course it does change the meaning, remember. Like you cannot grade them, but still if you do that, it gives you a very different meaning. Like for example, you can say it uh, is very much alive, but uh, it gives you a different meaning and not a literal meaning. Uh, it, it gives you a connotative kind of meaning. Right? Is it clear? Like single, for example, look at this single. Okay, you can you say that he's very single? No, you cannot grade it. But if you do that, it will give you totally a different meaning. Is it clear now? Huh? Please, one guy just give me a response so that. Okay, now you see this one, right? Uh, now again, there are uh, now there are adjectives that can be gradable, right? Uh, for example, these uh, uh, gradable opposites. See, like for example, this one, right? This short and uh, tall and short, or uh, hot and cold. We call it opens uh, in its scale, like open, like. I mean, it, it's on the scale that is uh, open. Like, for example, uh, there is, like, for example, some of uh, these gradable adjectives may not be uh, pre-modified uh, by degrees uh, adverbs, uh, which indicates, like, uh, this... Uh, uh, totality like for example it can be more it, it it these these adjectives remember this tall or short or hot or cold these can be gradable remember like for example we can say we, we he is very tall or he is very short or he or it is very cold or it is very hot you can use it right but if uh, you want to use uh, adverb of degree and that indicates totality, like for example, total, tot, what is this word I'm writing it? Is it adjective? Totally. Huh? It's adjective. Yes, sorry, it's adverb. Yes, totally is an adverb, like totally. Okay. Now, I just told you that these are gradable words, right? Like, for example, this tall or hot, I can grade it. I told you about the other adjectives, just we studied it, that there are certain adjectives that they cannot be graded. Like we studied it married or single or dead or alive. But now we are studying these opposite adverbs. It can be gradable. We can say he is tall or he is short or it is very uh, hot, or it is very tall, or it is very short. But then there are certain adverbs, like these adjectives cannot take this kind of adverbs, which indicates totality, like for example, totally, or entirely. You put these ad adverbs with, with these kind of adjectives. Like for example, does it sound uh, correct when you say he's totally tall? Just tell me. Huh? No, no. No, sir. see, I know you know the rules because you have been, remember, this language is so strange that our mind, I mean, when we hear these sentence structures all the time, it is stored in our mind and like in, in, the, in the back of our mind, like we sometimes speak it, we don't know how it, it is structured or how our mind works, but we know it, like it's kind of stored in our, uh, in our brain. Like I just asked you, totally short or totally tall. See, we don't use it. Why don't we use it? 
because because this gradable opposite words okay and it like for example these adjectives the stall or hot we call it open ended scale they are on open ended scale right and may not be pre modified by degree adverbs indicating totality totality means like for example this wholly or entirely or completely you see we can use this completely is an adverb right you know this we talked about it what adverb is so completely is adverb but can you say he's completely tall can you say it no you cannot say it why because these adverbs indicates totality and these adjectives hot or can you say it is totally hot can you say this no sir we can say it, it's very hot yes we can say it very hot but very is an adverb and totally is also adverb completely is also adverb so then how can we say we just said that very is a adverb of degree and totally is also adverb of degree or completely is also adverb of degree but then in adverb of degrees we have certain uh, adverbs of degree which indicate totality so we cannot use such adverbs with these kinds of uh, ad uh, adjectives which are on the open scale means on the open scale means that it is tall and it doesn't have uh, a close kind of a scale which is zero like for example i will say it like this for example this is 10 right so it can be 11 and it's keep on going right and this is like for example zero okay like this is tall so this is a scale so this is like for example minus 1 or uh, minus 2 and then it will go on so it is not stop it's on the scale okay which is open ended scale is it clear huh yes sir it's very simple you just have to understand that how it works like but for example there isn't any rule that we can put uh, adverbs of degree with every adjective no there are certain adjectives which we call it uh, uh which which like there is no name to these kind of adjectives but you can say that they are on the open ended scale because there is no scale like so so it it i can make this diagram like kind of a this can be a diagram like for example tall okay now it is open scale why because if this is zero so very tall will be what this is like for example one if i say very very tall we don't say it but still so it is two and it is three and it goes on and it also goes on the negative side like for example minus one so it is open scale it never stops but then there are these other kind of adverbs okay which we call it on and which are on the closed scale for example if i give you full okay now this full is what it is op it is closed kind of uh, scale uh, it is on the closed kind of scale so you can say uh, 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 you can use these kind of adverbs with it uh like for example uh a uh, full or empty okay wait a second so with these kind of adjectives we cannot use these adverbs which indicate which indicating totality but then there are these adverbs which we call it i mean uh which are on the wait a second let me just do this so you see this one maximum and uh, minimum or uh, close uh, ended scale so 
So these words like, for example, empty, okay, this one, wait a second, this empty or full or impossible or possible or blind. Now, these kind of adjectives, like these some, some gradable adjectives, okay, can uh, denote properties on scale. And that is like this. It, it has a scale, remember. There is, like for example, I can say, if you just remember, like you, you just, I'll tell you a sentence and you tell me whether it's, uh, whether it sounds correct or not. If I say, uh, for example, completely uh, or absolutely full or completely full, we can say it, right? Yes, like, sir. It, it sounds it, correct, sir. Yes. Why does it sound uh, uh, fine? Because, because we have been using it, right? Uh, and people are people have been using it. We have heard it so many times that it sounds fine. But then there is a logic. What is the logic? That these adjectives are on the open scale. So we can use these gradable adjectives with it. Like for example, if I say he is, uh, he's for example, absolutely, this absolutely is also uh, adverb which indicated, which indicates uh, uh, totality. So he was absolutely uh, blind, okay? or he he is uh, completely blind you can use completely but you cannot say i'm uh, yes that is like you cannot say i'm very married or completely married can you say i'm completely married huh no sir no, no sir. sir so again there are certain adjectives which cannot be gradable and then there are adjectives which can be gradable. So we divide it into open class, I mean, adjectives on open class and adjective on uh, this closed class. So these kind of adjectives, the way, the one which you see on, it, on your screen is that full, empty, possible, impossible. They can use these gradable, uh, uh, these adverbs like for example if i can say he is completely blind or it is utterly impossible or for example almost white but you cannot say he is almost uh, tall or absolutely tall or for example you cannot say it is totally hot or totally cold but you can say it is uh, completely uh, full or it is uh, half full, you can say half full. Is it clear, right? This, uh, do you want to yes. ask me? Okay, okay. So we know, I know, okay, now look at this one. Look at, look at this sentence. Now this quite is also adverb, right? You know that, right? So read this sentence and tell me that is it the right one and what does it mean? Quite. She is quite tall for her age, isn't she? And another one is you were quite uh, right to refuse to pay. Uh, Now, if you see uh, it, this, this quite means two things, remember. It also has the meaning of like, for example, fairly, it has this meaning and it has uh, another meaning as well. So for example, if I say he is quite tall, means he's very tall for uh, her age. Is it right? And if I say this one, right, sorry. This quite. What does this mean? Uh, you were quite right, huh? Shabas, tell me. What does this mean? Quite. Sir, absolutely right. Very good. It has a meaning of absolutely. Okay. 
it has this another meaning. So this quite has two meanings, right? So if we have used quite, and this tall is on which scale, right? That is on the uh, open scale. So we can use quite with that. And then if you see another one, right is again. So here this right means absolutely, I mean, you can say you were absolutely right to refuse to pay. And you can say he is quite uh, tall. Quite means he's not absolutely tall, he is very tall. So we can use this quite is kind of an exceptional case because it has these two meanings. So this was different, that's why I give you this quite example. So now what are the most uh, important thing is this one. I mean, this will help you in this prescriptive uh, grammar as well. Now you see this one like, for, okay, first see this uh, example. Uh, like, for example, these adjectives, we can use it, uh, these, uh, like the use of implicit uh, superlative in response as an important way of showing agreement in conversation. So if you want to agree with somebody, uh, like you can say, uh, uh, oh, it's fantastic. So if you want to agree, you can say it is, it sounds absolutely amazing. Or for example, it is all right. Or for example, lovely. Yes, it is absolutely delicious. Right? Can you hear me just say yes or no, please? Today I feel like yes, nobody sir. is there. Okay. So these kind of these uh, implicit uh, kind of ad uh, superlative. For example, if I say uh, very tall, right? Like very angry. Okay. So you can say absolutely angry or what? Huh? You can say he's uh, uh, furious. Okay. Or for example, if I say uh, it is uh, very big, okay? So you can say it is massive, right? Or for example, if I say uh, he is very fat, huh? what would be the word for this one? Obese. Very good. Obese. Uh, obese is can be the word. Or if I say, uh, for example, uh, uh, glad, I'm very glad. Uh, huh? Tell me. You can say we're joyed. Right? So like these kind of, you can also put absolutely with it, right? So often to like these adjectives or these phrase, these uh, adverbs uh, can be used, okay, to, to exaggerate, like for example, for exaggerating. Uh, so to express an extreme or maximum degree of the property, like for example, maximum degree. Uh, so, for example, very few, uh, angry or furious, or for example, hungry or starving, or for example, uh, these they, they are like used for this to to express extreme or maximum properties. Okay, so is uh, we can use absolutely with it to intensify the response, right, or ex for uh, exaggeration. So we often use these pre-modification, uh, pre pre-modification, uh, pre or pre-modified adverb, absolutely. You can also use absolutely. Like in, you can say, he's absolutely uh, furious, okay? Or absolutely angry, or massive, absolutely. 
do you get it or for example if you can say uh, uh, he is very poor uh, how would you say destitute huh? very good destitute excellent zabardast very good or for example if you can say he is very very uh, creative Hmm. Yes. Intelligent. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Innovative. Yes. Intelligent. Yes. You can say intelligent, but innovative. Genius. In yes. And if you say he's very, very cute, he's adorable. So these are adjectives which we can use for like this to intensify or. Uh, used to for this extreme uh, extreme kind of degree of property right so you have to go and learn it like for example uh, deep or profound okay or uh, for example uh, so there are so many right you just go and search it but we can use this absolutely as well for such kind of uh, pre modification okay and then we have this uh, very interesting this one is that uh, pre uh, fixed modifiers do you know fixed modifiers or idiomatic expression like for this so fixed modifiers what fixed modifiers means is that fixed modifiers plus adjective it will always have an adjective so for example if i say bone okay bone dry so what is this dry huh what is this dry adjective adjective and what is this bone modifier huh noun yes noun but still a modifier right like it it modifies modifier so bone dry so these are called fixed modifiers remember fixed modifiers that it always work this way so bone dry is a fixed modifier or for example if i say uh, another one is like for there are so many okay because they, these are idioms you know what idioms are huh like for example this is also a fixed modifier pure white okay or for example if i say brand new okay do you get it or for example stone deaf hello can you hear me or for example yes, fast sir. or fast asleep like for example you can say i mean his throat was bone dry i mean it was very 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 dry okay or for example very soon he was fast asleep i mean like this or pitch or pitch dark okay or for example so there are so many okay these are uh, um, idioms that we can use idioms uh, and we can make new kind of words all the time right have you ever heard about this uh, this word oxymoron hmm? yes yes what is oxymoron cold fire very good cold fire okay now cold fire okay it's a oxymoron like for example we just said it this uh, uh, we said married is what okay for example i'll tell you that later so oxymoron is that when two uh, contradictory or opposite words uh, combine and we have uh, ox so is there anybody who doesn't know this oxymoron just tell me so if you know it 
or if you don't know i'll explain it because this is very interesting it's a uh, like we can use it like for example uh Salam loud zamaran is a speech huh? of figure yes it's a figure of speech yes exactly it's a figure of speech and we can use it in in writing we can find it in in almost i mean it can be used in different ways and gives you different meanings for example this old news this is also oxymoron right or for example same difference see it it sounds very 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 different like you think how or for example uh, seriously funny see how can like you think how it works like seriously and then funny but it works together remember it it is a same word kind of so funny and and seriously so what i'm just telling you is that you can make these new kind of words all the time like you have this freedom of making it and in a different way or like for example see seriously funny is an oxymoron can you give me another oxymoron jaldi se batao huh? or for example living dead poor rich uh, happy poor to be rich said poor rich is not oxymoron like you cannot say he is poor rich no this is not an oxymoron ha huh? yes like very uh, happy happy to be said happy i'm no. happy to be said sir is, is it exumer no 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 so, like for example when you when somebody asks you for this id uh, and i see right and they tell you give me original copy this is oxymoron like original and then copy if it is original how can it be copy and if it is copy how can it be original do you understand it is very yes. interesting anan is a anan is a big baby <laughs> very good big baby is an oxymoron as well very good or uh, for example you say it's open secret see open and then how can secret be open but then you can say it's open secret so this open uh, is like an uh, yes it's open can work as an adjective it it modifies this uh, secret the what kind of secret mean it is open secret right a peaceful warrior is very good this one peaceful warrior you say well how peaceful warrior so and the most like if somebody asks you this hello this one this this was a joke that somebody sent me and they said like the he i mean the joke was like this that there are so many oxymoron like the way the the one we mentioned it like same difference or seriously funny or original copy and then he said uh that the mother of all oxymoron is uh happily married and now you see is it did, did did you understand it happily married no sir <laughs> it's because you are not married right now remember oxymoron these two words always will be different like for example the c open and secret or original or copy or dead or living or dead serious or funny now happy if you ask somebody that how is your uh, married life and if they come and tell you that i'm happily married it's not that they are happy remember they are making they are telling or they are making a joke they are like kind of not literally telling you that they are happy but maybe they are just telling you uh, or giving you this oxymoron that married people cannot be happy <laughs> do you understand huh hello yes sir 
Or for ex so this this is an oxymoron. Or for example, if you somebody says act uh, naturally, yes, act naturally. Can you give me any oxymoron in Pashto? Uh -huh. Have you ever heard about? It? Huh? Yes, sir. Or for example. Yes, sir. For example, another one can be Akhalakwina, we kafir mulade. Do you understand? Oh, huh? Yes, sir. Now, kafir yes, sir. is working as an adverb, right? So we say kafir mula. So, I mean, this is not giving you a literary meaning, so it's opposite, right? So these oxymoron, okay. Uh, it was just, I was just, it cannot be adjectives all the time. Okay, now look at this compound adjectives. Now you see uh, what happens with these compound adjectives. Like for example, can you give me any compound adjective? Uh, you know adjectives as well. So what you have to do is, like for example, if I say, uh, narrow minded, huh? Narrow uh, minded. This is compound adjective, right? Now, what is this narrow, huh? Hello, yes. Adjective. So, like we we will just say that that narrow is adjective, okay. Plus, uh, past participle, right? So sometimes it can be adjective or part past participle, or sometimes it can be ed, or sometimes it can be i i n g, or sometimes it can be uh, adverb, like for example, if I say uh, narrow minded, okay, or for example, if I say uh, highly, uh, highly respected, what is this? What is this highly? Huh? Adverb. Yes, it is adverb. So, adverb, and what is respected? This is a past participle. So, for example, middle age. So, it can be adjective plus third form of the verb, adverb plus ing, like for example, never mind, uh, never minding. Okay. For example, never mind or never ending. Or, for example, uh, world famous. Now, you see this world famous. Uh, what is this word? World. Huh? and famous. So it's a noun and adjective. So it can be noun and adjectives. Or full time. Now what is this? Adjective and noun. So see opposite. Or for example, uh, uh, fat free. What is this? Fat. What is fat? Or what is free? Huh? Fat is an adjective okay plus adjective free is also again adjective so these uh, compound adjective can be formed by like by adding adjective adjectives or uh, noun adjectives or noun third form of the verb and noun participle past participle or present participle we can or for example smoke free area okay smoke free um, uh, restaurant or hotel, smoke free where you can smoke, right? Do you understand me? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So what, what we can do is that we can make these compound adjectives, right? And there, there are so many. So, okay. And then there is this another one is comparative expressions. Like, for example, 
there are certain adjectives like for example those kind of fixed adjectives you see we just studied those fixed adjectives means like uh, uh, the, this one right this uh, bone uh, dry okay so we or for example we can say um, uh, like as dry as bone or uh, for do you understand have you ever heard about this one right or for example as white as sir as white as huh hello no very good no see these are uh comparative expressions and these are also kind of fixed kind of rule that it will always be like this as white as snow or as white as sheet be right we can use snow and sheet right as white as sheet or as white as snow okay as light as uh, Yeah. As, breath, as, light. as light as feather, right? As blind as uh, bat, as hard as rock, these kind of expressions. So go and find it. These are uh, kind of uh, fixed uh, expression or fixed adjectives. It will always work like this, okay? Uh, we have only five minutes. Okay, now you see, I'll send you this one and then you can read it. Okay, this one, and then you can ask me a question. Now, this one is just very important. We have only five minutes, so let and this one is again very simple. Now, you see this uh, uh, order of adjectives. Like sometimes in a sentence, we have uh, more than uh, uh, one adjective right so what can be the order right now this can be the most uh, uh, neutral sequence of adjectives types like for example you see the sentence okay can you see my cursor huh yes sir. yes sir. yes for example these uh, wonderful uh, Monumental, strong, old, gray, Indian, long, uh, long carrying is again a compound adjective. Elephants of Northern Thailand. Now you see all these are adjectives. Okay. Now it's, we don't have like uh, one or two adjectives. There are so many wonderful, okay. Monumental or strong or old or gray or Indian, or this. So you already know this one, maybe you have studied it in first or second year, that there is a sequence, right? So you should know this one. So whenever you have adjectives, you should know that uh, first uh, this, uh, this wonderful opinion adjectives will come, then if you have a size, uh, adjectives which show size or physical, uh, quality or shape so this will be a sequence right okay now it's not like we don't use it all these kind of adjectives in one sentence but so like just imagine if we have uh, so many these kind of adjectives we will use it in this order that first will be this one and then shape and then physical quality sorry physical quality and then shape right and then color and then origin or material or type or purpose huh is it do you get this one right okay if you want to ask me any question you have only three do you have another class today Nothing. okay you don't have it so then we can uh study okay we can have time so yes just look at it and if you have a, uh, you want to ask me any question you can ask me look at this one is the function what is the function we also talked about this one okay 
So if you see uh, non-modifiers or attributive function, we can also uh, say attributive functions or predictive functions. We talked about it, yes? Like for example, when you say uh, only rich people can uh, afford a flat in central London, or for example, if the head of the noun phrase is one of the pronouns, like when we have these pronouns, you see this one. Uh, yeah, just a minute. If we have pronouns like this, right? These pronouns, okay? All these kind of pronouns. So what we can do is that it can, uh, adjectives can come after this. Like there is nothing good, uh, this one, see? Okay. Here, if you see adjectives comes after it, but if we have so these kind of pronouns, uh, adjectives comes after pronouns. So pronoun and nouns can be subject, remember. There is nothing good about being poor. Or for example, uh, there wasn't really anyone famous. See, anyone is a pronoun and then famous after a pronoun. Or for example, something and something wrong. And what is this definitely? Huh? There is something definitely wrong here. What is definitely? Adverb. Adverb. So see, what I just told you is the attributive uh, function. So in attributive functions, we already studied it, that adjectives comes before a noun. But if those uh, subjects, or for example, these kind of pronouns are used, the one I just mentioned it like this, nobody or, or nowhere or anyone. Now adjectives uh, can follow these kind of pronouns. Like for example, uh, I just mentioned it, anyone famous, had a, there wasn't really anyone, anyone famous. Or for example, something wrong, okay? Or predictive, we also study this predictive. If you remember, we talked about it, okay? Sorry. You remember predictive, like it always has these linking verbs, okay? Or you remember this, we studied this predictive like this one, okay? Uh, Like for example, he is very happy. So this happy, he is very happy or Ali is very happy. So these are predictive uh, functions or predictive adjectives, okay? So yes, uh, do you understand it? And then it's, uh, uh, there is a compliment if you see copular uh, verbs, uh, like for example, these state verbs. So these state verbs also called copular uh, word, uh, verb. And uh, these are, if you remember, we talked about this one, this look and seem or get, okay? These always take adjectives with it. For example, uh, he gets happy or he gets sick, see? So this is a, a predictive uh, adjective or function that it comes after the noun or uh, he is happy. So this, th this is also working as uh, or becomes happy, see? These are not action verbs, remember. These are state verbs. He seems happy or he looks happy. Okay, uh, I think you're not bored, right? I hope you're not bored. Hello, are you there? Yes, sir. Uh, just talk to me. What are you doing? Today you are not saying anything. You're just listening. Like, you look at this one. Okay, this compliment. I mean, yeah, last uh, in last lecture, somebody asked me about this compliment and uh, uh, modify, right? That what is the difference? I mean, it's a little bit, uh, I mean, it's very, like, 
a little bit confusing to identify what is a complement. So if you see um, that chicken tastes very odd, okay? So what is, where is the adjective in this one? That chicken tastes very odd. Uh, so. Hello? Odd, odd. Yes, odd is the adjective, okay? And it is an attributive adjective or pre, uh, pre, pre predictive adjective. Attribute. Attri why attributive? No, it's a predictive. Attributive adjectives is like, for example, if I say odd uh, taste, that would be a pre pre uh, attributive adjective. This is called predictive adjectives. I told you in previous lecture. And if you see the, the main difference about uh, this predictive and uh, attributive adjective is that predictive adjectives can take this state verbs. Remember, and you know state verbs. These are state verbs and be is also a state verb. So if I say he is very happy, now, happy is what? Adjective, right? Attributive or predictive? Huh? Is it predictive or what? Happy, sir. Happy. If I, no, not happy. If I say he is happy. Sir, it is predictive. Yes. And if I say I saw a happy man, Sir, it is attributive. Attributive. It is attributive. I think you you were not present in that uh, previous lecture. Uh, you just go and watch that video. We talked about predictive and uh, uh, attributive adjectives. And then, so I didn't explain it today. I will not explain it. Just go and watch that one. Is there anybody who are, I mean, who knows what is predictive and uh, uh, this uh, attributive adjectives. So if you don't know that, how will I teach you these things? Okay, if you see this object complement. Now, what is, I made him nervous. If you see this one, what is, uh, where is the adjective in this one? I made him uh, nervous. This one. Nervous. Nervous. Nervous, sir. Nervous is an adjective, I know, okay. And where is the subject? Where is the subject? Uh, huh? I. Yes, I. I, I is the subject, right? So remember, a uh, compliment is uh, like an adjective can be compl uh, compliment. Like, for example, if I say he... Uh, like, for example, if I say he is nervous, okay, where is the compliment? Nervous. Yes, nervous is a compliment. Very good, right? This nervous is a compliment, right? And it is important that we should have compliment. It, it completes its meaning. If I say he is, what? No, nothing. It, it doesn't uh, give you a complete sense. But if you say he is nervous, so, okay. So this is called subjective uh, kind of uh, compliment, right? Subjective compliment. Or you can say verb compliment as like verb. It, it, or subject, it tells you about the subject, right? But if you say here, I made him nervous. Okay, so this objective nervous, compliment. Very good, because it is used for object and him is the object. So compliment adjectives can be compliment in different ways. It can be object compliment or it can be uh, uh, like, for example, if I say he looks, okay. He looks smart or he looks sad. So what is this sad? It's adjective, but it is also a compliment. And what is this look? Look, sorry. What is look? Verb. Verb, very good. And this is copular verb, right? 
so this is a verb uh, so this sad is a verb complement is it clear yes okay now look at was these examples then i think you are bored so we'll finish the class today i don't know what happened to you guys but you don't sound uh, okay now look at this one right for example sorry this one where is the examples look at these example um, are they are they a similar age uh, see now it has just one adjective with no complement see are they similar age right so uh, similar is what uh, adjective just adjective with no complement but if you see the second one uh right hadron re reach under the uh, counter and brought out a a badge similar to the one he was already wearing on the vest uh, coat so see this is a uh, uh, adjective and then a complement yes, yes. adjective okay. where is the adjective where is the adjective Harden reached under the counter and brought out a badge yeah. sir uh, isn't it adjective class sir yes it is ad no where is the adjective first tell me where is the adjective Similar. Very good. Similar. So similar is the adjective, right? And so similar is the adjective, okay? And then uh, the comp. There is a complement as well, okay? This one to the one he was wearing already so yes this is also a adjective uh, clause as well okay so and this is the noun right the badge is the noun so adjective also and the complement also comes after the the noun right and if you see here now for example adjective first adjective and then in the middle there is a position is a noun is a uh, is a noun and then the complement so see adjective before the noun had adjective before the noun had this one similar so see this similar is used in three different ways number one is just an adjective and the second it is used with a complement but both adjective and complement after the adjective after the noun and in the third like the last one this one uh, adjectives uh, is in the uh, adject first adjective and then the noun and then the complement so this has a different position of adjective that it ch changes right uh, okay i think it's enough right i think you are not interested today Yes, sir. It would be in of the students are also sir less. Uh, also, what? There are seven. Yes, sir. Sir, there there is no input, sir. So yes, there is no input. But Anista, I think they are sleeping or they have they have just joined the class and they have they they fell asleep. I guess. Sir, थोड़ा ज़्यादा हो रहा है सर आज क्या this is enough. I'll send you this file. Just read it, and then if you have any question, then ask me. Okay. Right. No, so why? Can I was large Sir, actually, we are believing our silence is good. Huh? Yes.
रिमेम्बर دا کلم نشی کے دے چے جابز بے خلق وی کنا چے انٹرسٹنگ وی لیکچرز بے کلا بورنگ ہم وی کلا دا وی انٹرسٹنگ ہی اٹس ناٹ اٹ 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 از ناٹ پوسیبل دیٹ اٹ ول الویز الویز بی انٹرسٹنگ ہا اٹس اوکے ہے دا سر اور بلٹ ون خستہ خبر دا چے لائک कल ना कल वो दस इज़े तो खाम खास इज़े चे इफ़ इट्स बोरिंग रिमेम्बर यू लर्न सो मेनी थिंग्स यस बर्दाश्त पे दाकी दस इज़े तब कल ना कल खाम खास इज़े चे आगे इज़े बोरिंग वी सही खबर है ना बस आर वक्त इच्छे इंटरेस्टिंग ही और वक्त ही मज़ेदी ही ना बियां पन में क्या सही खबर है � دا پرسنالٹی ڈیرا خکئی چ تو خط چا سویل چا کوسچن کول سوری سر فائل سر رو لے گئے سر چ مون سٹڈی کو دینا بعد سر کا سا کوسچن سر بیا نن نن اس اس دا 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 زد تا سو خبر کوئی زد ما دا در سینڈ کو خا سر دا ویڈیوز بمو گور سر سر دا فائلز بمو گور سر ٹول چ سم رے کر ویژن سر گورا ز تا سو تا بیا یو آسان خبر کو ما ستاسو ماشاءاللہ انڈرسٹینڈنگ خدے ڈیر خدے ما چ سمر جج کو کنا جی سر تاسو تب پیپر کے انشاءاللہ اس مسئلہ نی زکا چ تاسو ماشاءاللہ در زی بس صرف اور صرف دا فائلز بریت کوئی او دا ورڈ دا دا غو یاد ہوئی دا نمون نی جی سر بالکل بس سمپل گورا ہر یو سینٹنس تاسو چا تکری تاسو پہ پوئی گئی تاسو تو پتی وٹ از ایڈجیکٹو وٹ از ناؤن خودن دیار آر دیو سردہ ہر ٹیچر ہوئی کو بیا پیپر ساؤٹ آف کورس بنتا ہے نا 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 انشاءاللہ نا نا دا سو دیکھیں با ساؤٹ آف کورس رازی یار دا خبر اٹک دے سر او دا یو دلتا کو یو سوال کان دیا کو ماشاءاللہ دوں گا تکڑے بھی کے اس مال نمونہ نا رازی خوچی ماں کم کو ایسے نم کرے دے ماشاءاللہ غی لور زی صحیح سر ना ना दाब कल मिलावी गया यार सितंबर सर सर सितंबर के घोसर दा सेमेस्टर वो एग्जाम बखाम खाई करना सिमम पास की ना दी बद दी ना दी बद वहाँ पर खेल दास चल कहीं का ना माता दास ही लगी चे वी विल हैव अगर सुबह ते इंटरनल एग्जाम ही नहीं एग्जाम्स यस सर او بس ما غا انٹرنل ایگزامز اگا چ سمر مارکس سی بس ام پاغی بدل ریزلٹ در کی نو دا ز چ تا سمر ما تا لائن کنا گورا دے زل ما دے زل ٹول سور تے اختیار ب گورے مون سر ای گورے زما خبر ما نہیں گورے سر نو سر مو خوخ پلو کیو سر نو بس ما تا اس تے وی نی دی چ دا سور تے وی سو کر ریپلائی کئی پ گروپ کے کنا او تو سر تاسو سر تاسو پیج نہیں نہ نو سنگا بابا تاسو ہو تو نہیں ما تو پتہ لگی ما تو پتہ لگی گور استاس نم دے اس تما تو صرف نم خا زما خوشحال نم دے سر بس خوشحال ہو گٹلے دا دے ہو کوسچن ہم کئی او تکڑم دے ماشاءاللہ دے لوجیکل لکتا لے درزی دے شزون درزی او تو ڈیر ایکٹ نو بس خوشحال مون کو پہلے نیو پہلے کل چما فارم را گستو سر مون پاگے ورز ملو شیو اصل کی لاسٹ لاسٹ ڈیٹ او دا فارم کل چما بی ایس تے ایڈمیشن کا استاد کیمرہ آن کا چلک دیو گورم کا سر یو مائٹ ناٹ ریمیمبر می نا 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 ز ائی ریمیمبر مائی ایچ اینڈ ایوری سٹوڈنٹ ماشاءاللہ چ یو ظلم گورم اس پر دائی چ دے زل لگ دا حالات بدل شن اس پر آوازوں پہ جنم بالکل سر سرا دا غسر دا غسر زدر غلے ہو مستاس و ایو مرگر دے اسد او او کیا دی شی سر پا غا فرس دے باندی مونگ اصل کی ماتا خود ایڈورٹس کالش پتا نوہ چی دلتم بی ایس انگلیش دے کم اصد 
کم اسد اسد سدے سر دلتا کوارٹ روڈ باندھی پاتی کی کی گلشن رحمان کا لونے کی واو واو دما دیر خمر گرے دے شیخ بالکل خ خ خ اسد بیاد نو اسرا خو زمونگا ونڈیان دی ډیر وخت نو ډیر په جنگلو او مشارانو سره راست پاسته خ خ خ نا غزما د سکول مرګری دی او ډیر جخت مرګری مې دی ډیر جخت مرګری مې بالکل سر بیا وعده کی مولی دی خو بس سر خوال در نره ل مای ضرورت نشته پرې دی بس دا سر بس دانش پیله کو د منې او ځان دا اوسنې او ځان شپېلې کوي اوس دا وګوره دا شپېلې چې مونږ وایو چې ځان شپېلې کو ګوره دا مس د پښتو خپل ګرامر دی کنه بالکل سر نو دا اوس څه دي تاسو به څه وایي چې دا څه دي ځان شپېلې کو فیگر اف سپیچ سر یس کاین یس فیگر اف ایډیم غونت دی ایټس ا ایډیم zan spele kolu matlab different te matlab words does not give you actual meaning it gives you a different meaning a figurative speech te bilkul de ha bilkul us da mung of zimron we talked about oxymoron kana yes sir no tasla chi oxymoron dar zinu chi khalak aghamat us if you remember we talked about this uh, uh, this wit right witty person نچی کلاغی انٹلیکچوئل جوکس کے یو ول ناٹ انڈرسٹینڈ اف یو ڈونٹ نو اگزیمرون لائک فار ایگزامپل مائی آرٹیکل آئی واز ریڈنگ دس آرٹیکل اینڈ اگی کو آرمی انٹیلیجنس کنا وہ یو ڈپارٹمنٹ کو لاوی کی وی اگا دے آرمی انٹیلیجنس کنا نو اگور پور خندل چې اٹس اگزیمرون آرمی انٹیلیجنس لائک آرمی خلق خلق وی چې غی دومره انٹیلیجنٹ نی دی یو گیٹ ایٹ یس ور بالکل او خلق به وی جوړه آرمی انٹیلیجنس ای مین دس از اگا دیر از سیریس لگیا دے نو کتوس ما تو وی چې سر هاو از یور میریډ لایف او زتا تو ایم چې ایم ہیپیلی میریډ Actually, I'm telling you oxymoron. I'm te- I'm I'm telling you a joke. But if you don't know oxymoron, no, then that sooch you that yes, sir is very happy. Actually, I'm not happy. I'm just telling you uh, oxymoron. Do you get it? So if you don't know these elements, these figure of speech and how language works, you will not enjoy reading uh, novels or reading these. Uh, uh what kind of jokes you will not even understand jokes where is right yes sir ba zama ba khal bia ud ke gayi khal lag ra pa se de ho bia ud se ma sir ji active ho bas good 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 